Welcome to TRS Clips. It's for all you guys whose attention spans are reduced because of short form content. This is the highlights channel. Enjoy the video and make sure you consume a bunch of highlights. Binge watch TRS Clips. The first question is an explanation of the causal body. Okay. Uh, Karan Sharir. Karan Sharir. So at the start of the podcast, we spoke about your physical body or your gross body, your subtle body or your astral body. Yes. How do you begin to explain to someone what a causal body is? Okay. What uh, is a current body? And correct me if I'm wrong, so it's also present in us right it, now? It's present in us, but it is in, completely inactive. So inactive okay. means uh, somebody who's, unless you are actually into very deep into spiritual practices, you will not experience the current Sharir. Experience the current Sharir means? It is, it's like this. You have the Atman inside also, right? The soul or what we call the, in the, in the specific Hindu term we use, the Atma. But how many people have experienced the Atma? Experience of the Atma is very different. Have we experienced the astral body? Ex astral body you are experiencing the moment you are experiencing any kind of emotion. It oh. is very close to the physical. What is close to the physical you will experience very easily. These are very far off from the physical. These are very, very, very subtle. So subtle that unless you are consciously able to take yourself to the subtle realm, you will not so easily... Do, do we experience. experience the astral body in our dreams as well? Yes, very much. Absolutely. Always, when oh, we are dreaming, yes, your yes, astral body is yes, at play. Yes, in fact, dreams are not... Um, so, dream analysis is another very... <laughs> very <beautiful talk. laughs> another podcast episode. <laughs> so, yeah, more or less, in during dreams, your astral body is fully active. That's where all the thing is playing out. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, everything. Now, how do we begin to explain causal body? Okay. Causal body or the Karan Sharir, as we call it, is the is the root, the seed of the karmas are planted there, from which it, you might have done at a very ancient time something. Many lifetimes. Many back. lifetimes ago. Obviously, you have no memory. Nobody has any memory of it. But it has kept some impression from there. From there, that matures and percolates down into your astral. By the time it comes to astral, already things are happening here related to that karma. Okay. So, uh, second thing is that the causal body is um, in that state, if you are able to consciously attain to the causal body in yoga, in meditation, in tantra sadhana, in uh, anywhere else, etc. Uh, by the time you reach the causal body, you are already beyond the astral. So, there are no negatives in the causal body, in that realm of the causal body. No negative entity has the right to even enter into that realm. They Correct me. The capacity. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. So, so in Autobiography of a Yogi, which is my all-time favorite book, mm. I've learned so much of mm. spirituality from that mm. book. There's an entire chapter that talks about the astral realm. Okay. So they say that when you attain enlightenment here, mm. you gain access to the astral realm. So rather than being born again on our plane, mm. you're born in a higher plane. Mm. But spiritual progress doesn't stop there. Mm. Even as an astral entity, you keep evolving until you earn the right to experience the causal reality. Yes. And the closest thing to explain a causal reality to a human mind is what you feel in REM sleep. REM sleep. Like when, you know, sometimes you're very tired and you sleep and the moment you open your eyes, it's morning and you're just mm -hmm. feeling fresh. Mm -hmm. But that time in the middle wasn't even time in the first mm -hmm. place. It was a causal reality. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of close? Sort of. That's, that's kind of broadly, uh, broadly similar to the idea that I was trying to explain. I'll let you take the reins. Yeah, that's broadly similar to the idea. So causal body is not easy to reach, but it's, it's where your true spirituality starts in a way. Okay. Okay. It is not a true spirituality. Astral also, there'll be spiritual things possible. And there's a wide range of activity that is happening in the astral. But the causal is very detached. It is not connected to all the ups and downs of the uh, astral realm okay or the positive negative the polarities that we see here is not there and as i said the what we understand as the good uh something we like okay you like a painting you feel good about it you like a old friend who's meeting and you like good about it or you you love somebody you like good about it. this whole feeling of positive and on the other side just the opposite of it you get scared you see a movie you don't like it there's a nightmare something like that you full this range of positive negative thing business doesn't happen in the causal it's beyond that it's even beyond to uh, for an average human being uh, imagine that there is a, a, a there's something that's happening here it's a reality and then there is a world of imagination in the imagination you can travel through the astral planes and then there is a world which is beyond your imagination understand this even you cannot imagine it 
you don't have the capacity to imagine that also it's so rare like try thinking of a new color ha it's ex- sort of exactly very good example so try thinking of a new color very difficult so it's something like that but it's attainable through the practice of uh, whether you do yoga or whether you uh, do tantra sadhana or something like that or whether uh, whichever deity you are worshiping they will take you one day to that level okay and you will see how terrific it is so all these sadhus that we see in the himalayas or even saints that we know of you know saint tukaram or and anyone who has completely evolved in our earth hmm. okay hmm. all these great saints of different religions hmm. did they only achieve access to the astral realm or had they got access to the causal realm as well or was there a mix uh i think there was a mix but i think there were many saints who have gone to the causal realm and uh, beyond that causal also there are realms where so basically it's like this if you go to a causal realm and if you are permanently stationed your your consciousness is permanently uh, see again these are very loose words the actual word is chit shakti is permanently stationed in the causal realm what is chit shakti chit shakti is the power that motivates you to do sadhana and everything that animates you okay so <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> the electricity of your soul <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know I don't know what So anyway consciousness for huh. lack of better words yeah. so if your consciousness goes to the karan jagat the world of the ast- of the causal hmm. and your stations there you are like a god understand this thing our dharma says that in theory if your practice is good at the highest realm you can divinize yourself to the level of a god now and not just not just our main ye uh, i mean not just the vedic dharma even in the tantric religion when the uh, shaiva siddhantas came in and not just the shaiva siddhanta the kashmiri shaivism which is one of the non dual beautiful versions of uh, shaiva philosophy from which tantras derive they mention this that eventually you can reach a, there are realms uh, tatvas okay 36 tatvas are there changes that happen etc and you can attain to the condition of sadashiva condition of sadashiva you will not become shiva shiva is one but you can have that l- and you means one in millions i'm not even saying that everybody can do it one in millions and millions but it is possible to attain to that level of consciousness in our lifetime it may take many lifetimes all this thing is not going to happen in one lifetime but while you're physically present in the uh, oh. human birth beyond that is also possible but there you have to the body is too gross to hold that energy you have to go beyond that which is what happens to some great saints where their souls just leave their body because they realize now i want to go there yes and in fact i very recently that just again a tangent that came into my head go for it uh, i was once uh, guided very brilliantly amazingly by a gentleman whom i never met whose name also i did not know i still don't know his name but he was a siddha purusha uh, he was a tremendous bhairava upasaka what is siddha purusha siddha purusha the word siddha purusha we used to describe these type of saints who have gone to the karan sharir and the maha karan who have become like a devata only like a god almost that we call a siddha purusha is beyond all ordinary conceptions the spiritual leaders we see in india today uh, i can't comment on any i don't want to comment on no, any no, individual I won't, i won't ask you any names uh, but, but uh, may or may not be some may be some may not be but i believe that if you go very deep into the siddha avastha means the condition of the siddha avastha means condition condition of the siddha you become siddha purusha that level you reach it's to break it down let's say 0 to 100 100 is the maximum spiritual growth that you can happen if you are up to 60 65 only you will already become pretty well known and famous uh, these days to even 20% also becomes famous that's a different matter altogether mm. in my opinion okay but uh, beyond 60 beyond 70 beyond 80 those who go they normally do not they keep themselves very wrapped they will not come out in public so easily they are the people who are meditating far away in the himalayas they may be in the cities also but they'll make sure <laughs> that the your neighbor also does not know who he is this gentleman whom i was talking about he was a very powerful siddha very powerful siddha uh, he uh, he chose his time and place and condition of death he had the ability to do that okay. he chose that and uh, he had mentioned that when he's he, you know what time is he going to die where and etc where is etc and he wrote that that's because he's experienced all that is to experience in this life 
Now he wants to the, go to the realm of the God whom he worships, the Ishta Devata Bhairava. And he will continue his Upasana there. Even better Upasana will happen because the trappings of the human body are not there. Human body gets tired, it needs food, it needs rest. Okay, it has to go to the loo, various things are there. If you are if you go beyond the human body and if you can continue, that will be a wonderful experience. So this gentleman, what do you think his childhood was like? I have no idea because I hardly knew anything about him except that very strange manner he came into my life and he provided some invaluable guidance in certain upasanas I was doing. Okay. So I I deeply respect him. I I, I don't even know how he looks. I don't know his name. I don't know anything. I just know that communication is to happen this way that I used to write a question I had uh, to a friend. Friend is to go and give it to another guy who lived in a particular state. Then he would go into an interior village where he lived, go and ask this person. This person would say in his mother tongue and then he will translate and this process would take about 30 days for a question answer. But the answer was worth it. The answer that he would give, I would be, it's like, I was amazed. How the hell is he giving this kind of... He knew mm -hmm. every details of what am I doing sitting in my puja room. How many hours am I sitting? What deity am I worshipping? How am I sitting? You know, what changes are happening? What thought is flashing to my head? Suddenly he says that, you know, one day he sends so and so date. You were doing something. And this particular thought came that you should do this mantra, but you did not do. Why did you not do? You should do it. Do on this, this, this. You do it, you will see this, this results. And the guy doesn't know. I don't know how he looks. I don't know what is his name. Nothing. We've had a lot of monks who've come on the show. Mm. And uh, one of the monks said that, you know, people often think that monks are not ambitious people. But the truth is that they're the most ambitious people. They're so ambitious that they've left the material realm. Mm. And I had understood it. I didn't think that I had the right to say the truth that you just shared on the internet. So I'm glad that you're shedding light upon these mm. concepts. That mm. This is why monks choose a monk monk's life. Yes. Or rather, this is why the monk's soul chooses that particular body for that journey. Yes. Because that soul knows that, oh, I've already come so far. Now I don't want yeah. marriage. I don't want kids. Yeah. I don't want a career. I just want to go to that higher realm. Only difference between this and the material realm ambition is that. So this is also ambition. So see, we worship the goddess. One of the most powerful forms of the goddess is Kameshwari. Kameshwari is what? The controller of all desires. Without desire, no realm is going to run. Whether mm. it's physical, astral, this, that. She is the one who holds the reins of all desires everywhere. And only it is because of desire. You may be meditating in the Himalayas for 10,000 years and suddenly there is this spark of desire that comes in. Immediately evolution. The world runs, cycles run because of desire. And she is the mother of all desires. She is the controller of all desires. She is the Maha... Tripura Sundari, she controls everything. So when you pray to her, your desires go away? No, that, that's more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Another podcast. <laughs> no, it it can go away. It can go away to other, but it's not my, my uh, the reason I brought this up is because um, ambition in the spiritual field is perfectly all right. Greed is not. That's one thing that happens in the material plane very often, which is that I want it. I want it quickly in double quick time. I'll use whatever methods I want and I am greedy about it. Greed is greed, dishonesty. You will not survive in the spiritual realm. You will fall faster than you can because the beings you are dealing with, they know you inside out. They know you better than your parents know you. They know you better than you know yourself. Mm. And we are, human beings have the greatest capacity of self-delusion. Mm. I've seen so many characters like this, little experience and then they'll delude themselves into I've reached this and that. But they know, they know how much honest you are, how much you are making up stuff, how much your it's your own pep talk you are telling your mind that I am so and so, but what exactly is the reality they know? So you cannot fool them. Mm. Okay. This and greed, if this is removed, ambition is perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Our team spends a lot of time curating playlists just for you. So make sure you check out all the playlists that we've created on TRS Clips if you want to speed up your learning process.